Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. A doll possessed by the spirit of a ninja will have to join forces with a boy to get revenge on an evil businessman who forces people to do forced labor in terrible conditions. Today we will recap the story of the movie, Checkered Ninja, from 2018. In a factory in Thailand, several young people are victims of forced labor, being forced to spend days sewing dolls in a precarious situation. While they work, they are watched by an inspector, who, upon noticing that the factory owner is parking, shouts for everyone to start working properly. At that moment, Philip Peppermint arrives to supervise the factory accompanied by a translator, who, upon seeing the miners working, goes into a rage, but the inspector acts like it's nothing and says that if he doesn't do it, someone else will. In the heat, Philip takes off his plaid scarf and puts it on top of the pile of fabrics, while the inspector sends someone to get him a glass of water. By accident one of the boys ends up taking the scarf from the businessman and sewing it together with the doll, making a kind of checkered ninja. As soon as he realizes what the young man has done, Philip is in shock and the inspector immediately begins to punish him, but the businessman takes the stick from his hand and strikes several blows so hard that he ends up breaking the object. After venting all his anger, Philip leaves the place and gets into his car to go to the airport, but his credit card falls out and gets buried in the mud. Seeing that the boy is no longer alive, the inspector takes the dummy from his arms just as lightning strikes the factory, electrocuting him in the process. After being hit, the inspector stares at the object on the ground, which disappears before his eyes. While the man is distracted, the ninja doll that has now come to life comes out of the factory, finds Philip's card, and jumps into a box full of toys that is soon shipped on a cargo ship. Inside the ship, the ninja leaves the compartment and begins to explore the place, but is soon found by Stuart, a sailor who decides to give him as a gift to his nephew Alex. In his home, the boy is brushing his teeth when he is interrupted by his half-brother Sean. After being thrown out of the bathroom, Alex goes to the kitchen to eat his breakfast where he finds the rest of the family eating, but when he sees that Sean has touched everything without washing his hands, the boy decides to go to school without eating. At school, Alex meets his crush and thinks about getting closer to her, but Odysseus, his best friend, shows up and gets in the way of his plans, calling him to come to class. While walking up the stairs, they encounter a boy named Glenn who sticks gum on Odysseus' glasses, but since they are so much smaller, the friends refuse to fight back and head for the class. During geography class, Alex begins to feel bored until he sees Jessica through the window and starts drawing hearts and her name in his notebook in honor of her. But the teacher sees and calls his attention back to class. After the lesson, Alex goes straight home where the family is gathering for their birthday party. After Uncle Stewart arrives at the place, everyone sits down at the table and John gives a gift to both Alex and Sean, saying that the two should be treated equally, but despite this, he gives a plastic vase to the birthday boy, while giving a Mario Kart game to Sean. Seeing his nephew's sadness, Stuart says he also has a present and hands him the plaid ninja. After unwrapping his new doll, Alex is happy and everyone says they have never seen a ninja in plaid before. Stuart ends up using this excuse to pretend it was an expensive gift. After handing over the doll, the uncle starts implying that John was with Alex's mother just to get his money, which makes the woman completely furious. To avoid any more trouble, Stuart starts to get ready to leave, but before he leaves the house, he goes to Alex and says that he can help him with whatever he needs. After the disastrous celebration, the boy goes to school the next day and shows the gift to his friends, who are also impressed by the plaid outfit, but suddenly Alex's attention is diverted to the other side of the cafeteria, where Jessica is inviting a group of students to her birthday party. Noticing this, Odysseus calls the girl to their table saying that Alex wants to ask her something, but the boy gets extremely nervous and says absolutely nothing. Just then, a group of bullies appear and give Odysseus a supreme slap on the back of the head, causing his glasses to fall off. When the boy tries to take them back, Glenn lifts the object and starts humiliating Odysseus while everyone just watches, but suddenly, a voice comes out of Alex's backpack, saying that he will finish off the bully if he doesn't stop. Thinking that it was the boy who said this, Glenn goes after Alex, who trips over the chair and falls, but at that moment, a teacher appears and separates the two, telling the bully to go away believing that it was Alex who challenged Glenn. Odysseus thanks him for helping him get his glasses back and the boy tries to explain that he didn't do anything, but when Jessica shows up and also congratulates him, he gives up trying to explain himself. On the way out, Alex goes to a corner and tries to talk to the ninja, asking him to say something one more time, but Glenn hears him talking to himself and threatens the boy saying that if he tries to confront him again, he will finish him off. After this, the bully pushes Alex away and starts to back away, but as he is walking away, the ninja finally opens his mouth and cusses Glenn out with every name possible, telling the kid to get lost. They then get on the bicycle and start to run away, 
but the bully also gets one and starts chasing them, almost knocking them down a ravine in the middle of the road. Knowing that they will be caught if he does nothing, the puppet proposes a deal to Alex, saying that he will help him get rid of Glenn if he promises to help him as well. With no options, the boy accepts, and the ninja jumps into his backpack, creating an improvised blowgun which he uses to hit the bully right in the eye with an eraser, knocking him out instantly. When he arrives home, Alex tries to understand how the ninja can talk, but Sean interrupts by entering the room only to say that he has been invited to Jessica's birthday party, as well as mocking the boy's feelings by showing that he found the notebook where Alex drew the hearts for her. Ashamed, Alex tries to take the notebook back, but Sean says he will only give it back if he does his homework, a summary of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, in a single day. Angry with his brother, Alex starts to vent, but the ninja tells him that he is a coward. It is his duty to stop hiding, and start fighting for what he wants. Suspicious, Alex asks why he wants to help him so badly and the ninja lies, saying that he has found a lost credit card and needs the boy to read the name of the holder so he can return it to the owner. He then agrees and says that the card belongs to Philip Eppermond, but instantly remembers that Jessica has the same last name and begins to wonder if they are related. To find this out, Alex goes down to the kitchen and starts asking about the girl's father, until her stepfather confirms that his name is Philip. As night falls, the ninja drags Alex out of the house and starts talking about how the boy should approach Philip, because according to him, he wants to return the card personally. Even though Alex finds this strange, he follows the doll's instructions until they arrive at a playground, where they begin to think of a plan to find Philip. They finally agree that the best option is to get the boy invited to the party. The ninja then suggests that Alex face Glenn to impress Jessica, but the boy does not like the idea at all and says that he has no chance of defeating him because he is much smaller than him, but the toy manages to knock Alex out with extreme ease, proving that size means nothing. The next morning, while Sean returns the notebook and picks up his work, John shows up and argues with Alex for leaving the house without permission the night before, but suddenly, the boy's mother shows up asking about a very strange magazine that the ninja put in his stepfather's drawer. After getting rid of the scolding, Alex goes to his carpentry class, where the stuffed shinobi asks the boy to distract the teacher while he gets some tools from the storeroom, but since he is completely clueless, the boy ends up saying that he wants to bring his sword to school, causing him to be taken to the principal's office. While Alex is waiting, he sees Sean being told off for distorting the summary and starts to laugh at him, but it backfires when the boy shows that he still has a copy of the drawing and that he will give it to Jessica during the break. At this moment, Alex gets desperate and goes after his brother to try to recover the leaf, but the principal appears and interrupts the fight, calling Sean to talk about his homework. Panicked, Alex begins to complain saying that his life will be ruined, but the ninja tells him that whining won't do any good and that he must do something about it. At this moment, a school employee enters a room and uses the radio to give a message to the whole school, giving a great idea to the checkered doll. As soon as the man leaves the room, the shinobi of cloth infiltrates and uses his ability to mimic voices, to impersonate Alex and declare his feelings for the whole school to hear, while the boy starts to freak out outside trying to stop the ninja. As soon as the puppet finishes his speech, the director leaves the room and congratulates the young man on his courage to declare himself in this way, while Sean is simply left without reaction. After the confession, they go to the cafeteria where the ninja asks Alex to climb on the trash can and move his lips while he makes another speech. Even though he is afraid, the boy accepts and begins to mime, while the checkered doll mocks Glenn, challenging him to a fight on the playground, where the loser must go to school the way he came into the world for a week. After Alex is pulled off the dumpster by a supervisor, Jessica goes to him and says that if he is still alive after the fight, he can come to her party. After class, they return to the playground, where the ninja explains that their choice of location gives them a certain advantage, as they can prepare the ground. With this in mind, the duo begins to make modifications in the ring, while Alex takes advantage of his free time to train his skills, becoming an excellent fighter and getting closer and closer to the ninja. After much hard work, they finally finish the modifications and Alex decides to ask about the ninja's origin, discovering that his stuffed friend is actually the reincarnation of Teiko Nakamura, a shinobi who was tasked with protecting the last ten boys who managed to survive an attack against the clan. While Nakamura was carrying out his mission, a traitor revealed his location and the samurai went there to finish the job, but even though the ninja manages to defeat 16 enemies by himself, he fails in his goal and commits seppuku while swearing revenge. After his demise, a legend arose that Nakamura's spirit travels like lightning and appears whenever evil is done to an innocent, and can manifest itself even in a ragdoll. After the story, the pair goes home and the next morning they make their final preparations, taking some eggs and other objects from Alex's house. At the playground, 
everyone is waiting for them until the ninja imitates Alex's voice from the top of the roller coaster, only to distract Glenn as the boy comes up from behind and cracks the egg right in the bully's face. Taking advantage that he is wiping his eyes, Alex runs across a board while throwing oil on the wood, causing Glenn to slip when he tries to follow him. As the bully gets up, the boy continues to climb higher and higher into the treehouse, from where he throws various objects at Glenn. He then crosses a makeshift wooden bridge and removes the plank, forcing the bully to throw himself backwards so as not to crash to the ground. Realizing that everyone is laughing at him and cheering for Alex, Glenn is furious and goes around the park to finish off his opponent, but just as he is finishing his climb, the ninja breaks a rope, releasing a giant tire that knocks down the ladder and leaves the bully hanging. With a lot of effort, the little hothead man manages to recover and climbs a rope to reach Alex, but this is also part of the plan. Actually, the rope he is hanging from is part of a counterweight system. Therefore, when the ninja snaps the rope, Glenn goes flying and falls into a cart, which throws him face first into a mud puddle. With the bully's defeat, everyone applauds, and taking advantage that the boy is distracted, Glenn gets up and punches him in the face, knocking him to the ground with a sequence of blows. After being beaten, Alex decides to strike back and throws an elbow, which sends the bully far away. After getting up, Glenn remains confident and advances on the boy, but receives a punch to the arm and is knocked down once again. With his opponent on the ground, Alex manages to immobilize him and forces him to apologize in front of everyone, causing Glenn to leave the playground crying. After the fight, Jessica goes to the boy and gives him the address of the party, but when they get there, instead of letting him enjoy his moment, the ninja says that he has no time to waste and that they should find her father as soon as possible. As soon as they enter the house, Alex meets with Odysseus and manages to find out that Philip is in the kitchen with his wife, but just before they enter, the ninja tells him to make the woman leave and, even though he doesn't understand why, Alex accepts. He enters the room while saying that someone vomited on the carpet, which makes the woman come out to clean it up. Now that he is alone with Philip, Alex tries to talk about the card while the ninja comes out of his backpack with his mini katana ready to attack him, but realizes that this is not the target and returns to his hiding place. Even confused by the doll's attitude, Alex takes the card and hands it to Philip, but as soon as he sees the object, the man says that it is not his and that it must belong to the toy magnate, Philip Eppermint. After clarifying the mistake, Alex comes out of the kitchen and starts asking questions to the ninja who insists on the story of returning the credit card, but when Jessica shows up and asks him to dance, the boy accepts without hesitation, leaving the doll furious. Taking advantage of the girl going to the bathroom, the cloth shinobi starts calling Alex a traitor, saying that he helped him and now he refuses to return the favor. To try to calm him down, the boy says he will help after the party, but the ninja still feels betrayed and throws soda in his pants, making it look like he got all wet. Irritated, Alex begins to follow the ninja onto the dance floor where the dummy takes the opportunity to imitate his voice and say that he had wet his pants, but luckily for the boy, no one pays any attention. Then the ninja knocks on the bathroom door where Jessica is in, using the boy's voice, begins to offend her, saying that she is not good enough for him. Extremely nervous, Jessica comes out of the bathroom and faces the real Alex, but instead of listening to his explanations, the girl decides to take revenge and declares herself to Odysseus, leaving together with the young man. Outside the party, Alex runs into the ninja and they discuss their relationship again, until the dummy admits that he overreacted and promises that he will make things right if he helps him. Without much choice, the boy agrees and the two go to the real Philip's house, where the ninja knocks down a security camera in order to break in. Even without understanding the reason for this, Alex confides in Nakamura and together they enter the house, but when they arrive at the businessman's room, they find a suitcase packed in a ticket to Thailand, signaling that the cursed one is going to revisit the factory. While they are talking, Philip's dog appears and tries to attack them, but Nakamura manages to easily paralyze it with a blow below the ears. At that moment, Philip approaches the room and the ninja throws his sword at him, forcing Alex to hold his friend while the tycoon sets off the alarm, which causes all the doors to lock and the police to be called. As they are trapped, Nakamura decides to improvise a zipline through which they escape at the last second. Finally free, Alex asks for an explanation and the ninja doll finally reveals the whole truth, saying that Philip is a bad man and telling about what he did to the boy who ruined his scarf. But still, the boy says that he will not help take anyone's life. Furious, Nakamura knocks Alex's bicycle into a ravine and takes his machete to threaten him, but realizing that he does not have the courage to hurt him, the ninja changes his mind and punctures the bicycle tire, saying that his new target will be Sean. Desperate, Alex runs back home and breaks down the bedroom door, where he finds the doll on top of his brother with a pillow. To save Sean, the boy runs to them and tries to stop him, 
but when his parents arrive on the scene, Nakamura pretends to be an inanimate doll and makes it look like Alex is trying to hurt his brother. Panicked, the boy tells his parents the whole ninja doll story, but they don't believe him and take him to a psychiatric hospital, where the doctor says he will need to be isolated for a while until he returns to normal. Alone, Alex is visited by Nakamura who wants to know when Philip's flight is leaving. When the boy refuses to answer, he is attacked by the ninja, who twists his arm, knocking him onto the bed and throwing a trash can right at his head. Seeing that the boy won't budge, Nakamura calls the doctor, with the plan to attack him and then blame the boy, but when Alex says he wants to help him get revenge in another way, the ninja agrees to listen to his proposal. The boy explains that Thailand has some of the worst prisons on the planet and that they could cause the businessman to spend the rest of his life in prison. Nakamura finds this very interesting and agrees to follow the plan. He takes advantage of the doctor coming into the room to threaten him with his own syringe, forcing the man to release them. As soon as they leave the hospital, Alex tells them that the flight to Thailand will leave tonight and that they should visit Uncle Stuart, as he can help them complete the plan. At the sailor's house, Alex invents that he is going to do a paper on illegal substances and needs his help to figure out how to get some of them. Knowing that this would be a crime, Stuart claims that he cannot tell about this kind of thing, but purposely goes to the kitchen and drops a notebook with the number of the illegal seller and all the instructions to place the order. In this way, they call the merchant and Alex says that he wants to buy one kilogram of the forbidden substance, which makes the man very interested in the negotiation. So he makes an appointment in the supermarket parking lot and hands the package to Alex, but when the man tries to take their money, Nakamura gets out his backpack and manages to trap him in the trunk, along with a note to the police. To continue with the plan, Nakamura once again does the seppuku and Alex sews the package with the substance in the dummy's abdomen. With only one step left in the plan, the pair heads to the airport, and while Alex waits for Philip to arrive, the ninja is inside his backpack recording an audio message. Without understanding what he is doing, the boy sees the businessman arriving and prepares to put the doll in his suitcase, but as Philip goes straight to the security room, the pair must change the plan at the last minute. Since they can't get to him, Alex approaches the line at the counter and pretends to tie his shoelace, while the ninja doll jumps into the pocket of a golf bag. Not knowing if one day he will see him again, the boy says goodbye, while the checkered ninja goes to the airport conveyor belt and continues his trip to Thailand. After hours in the plane's baggage compartment, Nakamura finally reaches his destination and rushes to try to get into Philip's suitcase, but when he realizes that the man has already passed through immigration, the dummy jumps on a sniffer dog, who smells the illegal substance and begins to chase him along with the security team. After a while of running, Nakamura finally catches up to Philip and jumps on him saying that he will pay for what he did, but as soon as he finishes speaking, the dummy is ripped in half by the dog, which causes the package of the illegal substance to fall right into the businessman's chest. Now with Philip's arrest, Nakamura feels that his revenge is complete and finally frees himself from the body of the chess ninja. Back to his normal life, Alex is feeling empty and not even the video of Glenn running around the school can cheer him up, but when Jessica shows up to thank him for the apology on her voicemail, the boy realizes that the ninja really has fixed things and feels happy to have met Nakamura. During dinner with his family, Alex watches the news report about Philip's arrest and realizes that his plan really worked. Watching the news, the boy's family mentions that the illegal substance seller was turned over to the police by some mysterious vigilante and, driven by the lessons he learned from Nakamura, Alex decides that he will be that vigilante, taking on the crimes in the neighborhood with his plaid scarf. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.